weekend, I want to talk about cheerfulness. There was a person on our last spiritual retreat cruise that said to me, she said, you're one of the most cheerful people that I've ever met. Well, I just smiled. You know, my friend, sometimes the big life-changing moments are from people saying something negative to you. If you learn from it, years ago I was in a diner eating dinner in Nashville, Tennessee. And the waitress said to me, after observing me many times being in there eating dinner or breakfast, she said, you're kind of a sourpuss, aren't you? Well, that really took me back. A sourpuss, I thought. Well, she just doesn't know me. Or did she know me? What was I projecting to others? Was I giving them a smile, a wonderful, joyous tone in my voice? Or was I kind of down and grumpy all the time? I took that to heart and I decided to change. And I thank God to that waitress in Nashville, Tennessee, for that evening when she was brave enough to say something like that to me. And I decided to become cheerful and to make that a habit. Now I ask you to do the same too if you're in periods of grumpiness. Cheerfulness is a gift that we give to others, yes, but we also give it to ourselves. Listen to this. Proverbs 12.25 says, Worry is a heavy load, but a kind word cheers you up. Now, this Bible quote is usually interpreted in this way. that It's the kind words that you speak to others that cheer you up. And yes, that works. But also you talk to yourself constantly. And usually those words that you're speaking to yourself are negative words. Criticism and not praise. Often they're based in worry and it kind of takes a soul down a notch or two. As men and women who have been richly blessed by God, why shouldn't we be cheerful? Why shouldn't we have every reason to celebrate our Creator with joy in our hearts, smiles on our faces, and words of praise on our lips? God promises us joy if we accept God's love and God's grace and follow in God's ways. Listen to what Ralph Waldo Emerson said. So it is with cheerfulness. The more of it is spent, the more of it remains. Sometimes in life, it is a natural human tendency to fall into a pit of ill temper or frustration. During these times, we may not feel like turning our thoughts and our prayers over to God, but that's precisely what we must do. We need, at that moment, a soul transfusion. And we get it through prayer. We can have our helper lighten our load and our heart. When we commune with God, we simply can't stay grumpy for long. Instead, we'll be able to go out and to share a cheerful word or some other bit of praise or upliftment with someone that's carrying a heavy heart. When you accept God's gift of cheerfulness, you have it overflow from the center of you to the circumference of you in time. And you'll be able to share it with many. And I pray that that happens to you, my friend, this weekend.